there is a difference between gray rock and the silent treatment. And in this video, I am going to explain what that difference is and how they create two completely different results. Stay tuned. So when you utilize gray rock with a narcissistic uh, relationship, you're basically responding without an emotional attachment. And you are leaving the responsibility of how they feel in their court. So I wanna just give you a few general examples. So say you are having a discussion or perhaps somewhat of an argument with your narcissistic partner and they are saying you, 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 and you always this, and you this, and you that, and they've just got this you blaming going on. And normally, anybody responds to that emotionally because they feel attacked, personally attacked. Even though you may feel emotional, you don't attach a, an emotion to it. You put up this gray rock and realize that really is nothing has to do with you at all. This is their narcissistic way of projecting their anger onto you again. And so instead of responding in the usual way of trying to defend yourself and getting upset, which is exactly what feeds the narcissism, you would say, maybe respond in a way that's completely unemotional in a way, huh, that's interesting that you would feel that way because I don't feel that way at all or that you would see it that way because that's not how I saw it at all. And just be completely non-emotional within that response. Now, having said that, if you're in a big argument and you are super upset and he's super upset, that would just be the time to say, again, unemotionally, you know what, let's come back to this later because I just feel like it's not going anywhere good right now. And no matter what they say, just walking away and say, I'll, we'll come back to it later. Well, I will talk about it, but at a, another time. And that gives you some space and time to really think about it. And again, it allows you to just go gray rock with it. So it's unemotional. Another example is when the narcissist tries to pull you into gossip and drama. And so I heard yada, 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 or did you know yada, yada, yada? And again, trying to get a response from you about this drama that they are talking about. And instead of responding emotionally to them, like really, or wow, or, I can't believe that, or anything like that, or just being emotional in any way, you just simply say, Oh, that's interesting, but that's really not any of my business. That's really their business. And then you drop the conversation. Another thing that they often will do is try to get you to sympathize with a situation that they're in with somebody else and get you to move in and take care of a situation rather than them having to deal with it. So it might be, uh, I, you know, the neighbor's music is really loud and I'm trying to take a nap and I've told him before that I take a nap at this time and he just never listens to me and blah blah blah. They want you to get upset and run and call the neighbor and take care of the situation for them pulling you into it. But instead just again leave it in their court. It is their responsibility and maybe I give them a suggestion like, well, maybe you just need to be a little bit more frank about it or more firm about it. Uh, they might be talking upset about somebody that borrowed something and hasn't returned it. Maybe you need to call them. And leaving it in their court that maybe you could do this, maybe giving an, a suggestion or, or just saying something like, oh, that sounds, that sounds pretty frustrating. But leaving it with them and again, not giving emotion, not attaching emotion to it. Just a very frank, I heard you, but I'm not gonna attach emotion to it and it is your responsibility, not mine. Not saying that, but that's the message that you're getting back to them. Another way that this might play out is when they give off the irritated vibes, when they get really silent, and you can either just give off these vibes that something they're upset about something and you're trying to second guess what's going on. Uh, one thing is to don't, don't guess it. You may think you know, but just even if you know, just drop it and let them be responsible 
for their reactions and their choices on how they're going to treat the situation. And maybe they're coming in and out of the house and slamming the door and acting a little bit irritated. Now you could uh, ask, um, you seem upset, is everything okay? And a lot of times, I'd say about 75% of the time, they'll say, I'm fine. And they, what they want you to do is to continue to probe and get your attention all on them and their, in their issues. So, but rather than if they're going to say, I'm fine, take them at their word. Just go, okay. I was just making, you know, I was just checking and take them at their word and move on. Even if you know, deep down inside, they're not being completely honest with you. Move on because that's what they told you. Don't play the game of back and forth. Well, you keep slamming the door or I think something's wrong or really, because that's what they want you to do. They want to pull you in and to get your full attention on them. So if you feel like you need to ask, is everything okay? Because they're escalating to a point like it's so obvious. Now, if they do say, yeah, well, I'm irritated, blah, 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 blah. And then they start again with one of these um, other examples that I previously gave. Again, you can go back to those and respond again unemotionally. Always doing your best to keep the ball in their court. So remembering that you are not responsible for how they feel or the stories that they're telling themselves about the life around them. No matter what they've been through in their childhood or anything, it is still their responsibility. They are an adult and nor are they responsible for you. It goes both ways. So be responsible for how you feel and let them be responsible for how they feel. That is true gray rock. It is detaching yourself emotionally from your response. Now that doesn't mean that you are not going to feel emotional when some of these things happen and that you're not going to feel triggered. So it is going to be important to have healthy outlets for, for your own emotions. So you should have a list, a, a written list, at least a mental list that you know of things that you can do when you feel agitated and triggered, knowing how to soothe yourself, um, having a therapist or a coach that you can uh, make an appointment with, uh, a good friend that you can get out with or getting out in nature, or going to the gym to work out, or whatever works for you in order to calm your own central nervous system down. When you gray rock and you get practiced at it and don't expect perfection in this and don't beat yourself up when you haven't done it perfectly or you didn't gray rock, you didn't gray rock the way you're supposed to and it got worse, don't worry about it. It's all data, you're all just, it's all just teaching you something. So learn from it and then just move on from there. But that gray rock should diffuse most situations. Now, a lot of people, uh, are with a narcissist that is extremely abusive and probably psychotic and um, a sociopath or a psychopath. And that is a completely different situation you're dealing with. And the way you know that is that there is really no um, attach, emotional attachment at all to anything with them. Uh, a psychopath is just unemotionally attached to anything. And uh, same with a sociopath. A sociopath might be a little bit more because they were uh, made that way from the environment they grew up where a psychopath has something in their brain that supposedly has something in their brain that uh, physiologically they cannot attach emotionally. So there is subtle differences there. So we are talking here about narcissism, not uh, um, psychopathic or sociopathic behaviors. Those are completely different. And so if you're finding that with gray rock, it, they just play these little games and they're just constantly um, trying to manipulate and play a game with you. You might be going beyond, they are narcissistic as well, but you might be going into um, psychopathic and sociopathic behavior. And that is literally something that I would definitely remove myself out of if that were the case completely. So get yourself to safety if that's the case. But when we're just dealing with a, a narcissist that 
like I said, there's a scale and they're not super high on the scale and they're not being physically abusive and they're not playing manipulative, um, weird, psychotic games with you or whatever, then uh, the gray rock should diffuse a lot of these situations. However, what this video is about is the difference between gray rock and the silent treatment. I see that there's a lot of people out there that say gray rock, it makes it worse. And gray rock could get you in trouble, and especially if they find out you're gray rocking. Yes, especially if they're a psychopath or a sociopath as well. Uh, then gray rock, because they're a game player, completely 100%, just playing games with you. And they are not emotionally attached whatsoever. A lot of narcissists that aren't psychopaths and sociopaths can be emotionally attached to you, but a psychopath won't be. If you're just dealing with narcissism straight up, okay, and again, you don't have some of these other factors there, and you feel like your gray rock is not working, making it worse, or just doesn't work, then maybe you are not gray rocking so much as you are giving the silent treatment. And the silent treatment is completely different. It is indifference. It is pretending like you don't see it, completely ignoring it. So, and that only escalates any situation, just like if they do that to you, if they ignore you or they act indifferent toward you, that completely will escalate your situation. With gray rock, you're, you're still responding but you're responding without an emotion attached to it. So you're re listening, you're saying, in, in your response, it's saying, I see you, I hear you, but the, the emotional detachment from them is saying, but I am not make, allowing myself to be responsible for what you are responsible for. I'm detaching myself emotionally because that is yours and not mine and you're a full grown adult and you're perfectly capable of taking care of your own happiness and your own emotions. So that is the subtle difference. In bringing it full circle, gray rock is about emotionally detaching from the response that you give and keep and allowing them to be responsible for their own happiness and the own, their own stories that they're telling themselves and you to be responsible for your own happiness and your stories that you're telling yourself. So I hope this has been a helpful video for you. I hope that it's clarified some stuff for you. If you don't have an outlet or you just need an extra outlet, I would like to invite you to my Facebook group and I will leave a link below if you are female. I'm really sorry about that, but I do want to keep that uh, space for women only. Maybe eventually I will have a space for men as well, but this is a Facebook group for women. Thank you for taking time to listen to my video. Have a great day.